video, we we'll still talk about topic 4.1. We are going to the part 2 of it, where we will talk about balancing chemical equation. Before we go into balancing chemical equation, it's very important for you to know what is the reactant and product of a chemical reaction. This is an example of your chemical equation. And to identify the reactant and product, it's important to look at your arrow. So this is our arrow today. And if you look at the arrow, it's moving from the left to the right. Therefore, anything before the arrow will be called as reactants. The reactants are those things that we use, those compound molecule atoms that we use for the reaction to happen. So everything that stay after the arrow is what we call products. So products will be formed by the reactant. The process of the reactant changing to product is what we call chemical reaction. And when you write it out like this, that is what we call chemical equation. And our purpose of today's video is to write a balanced chemical equation. Let's look into how to balance a chemical equation. We have two methods inspection method and also ion electron method and for this part of video we'll focus only on inspection method what is actually inspection method we have four steps step one we need to identify the reactant and products and also their chemical formula second step we need to write the unbalanced chemical equation first knowing who is your reactant and also who is your products. And then the third step, we need to determine the number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. Last but not least, we will balance the equation by adjusting the coefficient only. And for today's video, we will focus on step 3 and step 4. Let's look into the first example. C2H4O2 and CO2 plus H2O. So this is your reactant and who is your products the products will be after the arrow so your carbon dioxide and water will be your products so we already identified the product and reactant we have their chemical written we already have the unbalanced equation given so we are focused only at step three and step four determine the number of atoms of each element on both sides we look at the reactant first I have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Therefore, we need to work out the total number of carbon, the total number of hydrogen, and the total number of oxygen on the reactant. If you look at it, I have two carbon. Hydrogen, I have four. Oxygen, I have two. And on the product, write the number of atoms of each element according to how you write on the reactant. So if I start with carbon, I will then start with carbon again, followed by hydrogen, followed by oxygen. If you look at your product, how many carbon do we have in your product? The total carbon that we have over here is one. The total hydrogen that we have on the product is two. The total oxygen that we have on the product is three. So that is the number of atoms of each element for both sides. We need to balance the equation only by adjusting the coefficient. What is actually coefficient? The number that's sitting in front of your molecule. That is what we call coefficient. Alright, let's start. I have two carbon, four hydrogen, two oxygen. Which one should we balance first? Because none of them are balanced right now. Oxygen is standing alone on the reactant. And in the products, oxygen is present in both of the compounds. Therefore, oxygen will be the last thing that we balance. Carbon on the reactant only exists in C2H4 and carbon on the product only exists in CO2. So we will try to balance the carbon first. I have two carbon over here. I only have one carbon over here. So we need two carbon on the product. Every single time when you put a coefficient, the number of atom changes. So we calculate the new total number of atom. Carbon, I have two right now. So we change the carbon to two. Oxygen, I have four because two times two. Oxygen on the water, I have one. 
So 4 plus 1, oxygen will be 5. And hydrogen is not changing, so we will ignore first. Second, we solve the carbon. Hydrogen, we have 4 hydrogen on the reactant. I need 4 hydrogen on the product. But on the product, we only have 2 hydrogen right now. So I need another 2. Hydrogen exists in water. So I have two hydrogen already. I need another two. Therefore, I put two in front of the H2O. And hydrogen right now become four because you have two times two. What about oxygen? Oxygen changes from one to two. So the total oxygen that I have right now will be four plus two. Total oxygen will be six. And if you look at it right now, carbon is equals to 2, balance. Hydrogen equals to 4, balance. Oxygen is the only one that is not balanced. I have 6 oxygen on the product. I only have 2 oxygen on the reactant. So to make it to become 6 oxygen, I will times 3. So 3 times 2, you will have 6 oxygen. And now the oxygen is balanced. So your balanced chemical equation will be C2H4, 3O2, 2CO2, and 2H2O. Bear that in mind, the number of atom that we write down here is the total number of atom of the reactant and of the product. So make sure you add everything up for the reactant and you add everything up for the product. Let's go to another example. Looks like more complicated because you have more atoms, but it's the same thing. That is your arrow. We are going to find the reactant. That is your reactants. And this part will be your products. We will start off with the same method where we will write the atom that we have in the reactant. I have hydrogen. I have sulfur. I have oxygen. I have sodium. I have oxygen again. Do I still need to write? No, because we are going to total them up. So I only need to write oxygen once and hydrogen once. So on the product, we will have the same order of element. Hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, sodium. And let's count on the reactant. So hydrogen on the reactant. How many hydrogen do we have? We have two hydrogen plus one more. So the total hydrogen that we have on the reactant right now is 3. Sulfur, we only have 1 sulfur. Oxygen, we have 4 oxygen plus 1 oxygen. So oxygen, we have 5 on the reactant. Sodium, we have 1 sodium. Let's check on the product. Hydrogen, how many hydrogen do we have? 2. That's it, we have 2 hydrogen. Sulfur, we have 1. Oxygen, we have 4 plus 1. Oxygen, we have 5. Sodium, we have 2. And that is the number of atoms on the reactant and on the product. And how do we balance that? If you look at the things that everybody holding is oxygen. I have oxygen on H2SO4. I have oxygen on NaOH. I have oxygen on sodium sulfate. I have oxygen in water. Since everybody is holding oxygen, therefore, oxygen will be the last thing that we balance. If you look at hydrogen, hydrogen also is in multiple compounds. Hydrogen is in H2SO4, hydrogen is in NaOH, hydrogen is in water. Therefore, hydrogen will also be the last thing that we balance. And if you look at the question, sodium is only in NaOH on the reactant, and sodium is only in Na2SO4 in the product. So we try to balance the sodium first. On the product, I have 2 and A. So in the reactant, I need 2 and A. So what do we do to make it 2? We put a coefficient 2. So 2 and A means my Na will change from 1 to 2. What happened to my oxygen and hydrogen? They are changing. So bear that in mind, in H2SO4, I have 4 oxygen right now. I have 2 oxygen in the NaOH because 2 times O. So the total oxygen that I have right now, 6. Hydrogen. I have 2 hydrogen in the H2SO4. 
I have another two hydrogen in the NaOH right now. So two plus two, four hydrogen. And let's check the number of atoms that we have on the reactant and product. Reactant, four hydrogen, product, two hydrogen, not balanced. Sulfur, one sulfur, one sulfur. Oxygen, six oxygen on the reactant, five oxygen on the product, not balanced. Sodium, two sodium on the reactant, two sodium on the product, balanced. So only hydrogen and oxygen are not balanced. And if you look at your product, your hydrogen and oxygen is the one that not enough. And if you look at your product in details, you realize that we have water that holding the hydrogen and oxygen. So we can try to balance by using water. I need four hydrogen over here. I have four hydrogen on the rectum, so I need to change from two to become four. And how to change that? Simply by putting a coefficient two. So when you put a coefficient 2 on the water, your hydrogen will change. Your hydrogen will have 2 times 2. Your hydrogen right now is 4. Your oxygen will also be changing. So your oxygen will change from 2 times 1, 2. Over here, I have 4 oxygen. So 4 plus 2, 6. Because this is the total of the oxygen. Bear that in mind. And if you compare them, Hydrogen 4 on the rectum, hydrogen 4 on the product, sulfur remain balanced. Oxygen 6 on the rectum, oxygen 6 on the product. Sodium remain balanced. And your chemical equation right now is balanced. Let's try another example. NO2H2O is your reactant. And then you have your HNO3 and NO as your product. So what is the first step? The first step is writing the type of element that we have. On the rectum, I have nitrogen, I have oxygen, I have hydrogen. On the product, put it in the same order. I have nitrogen, I have oxygen, I have hydrogen. So nitrogen on the reactant, I have one of them. Oxygen on the rectum, I have two plus one. I have three of them. Hydrogen, I have two in the water. So hydrogen, I have two. On the product, nitrogen, I have one in HNO3. I have another one in NO. So nitrogen, we are having two. Oxygen, we have three in the HNO3. And we have one on the NO. So oxygen, we have four. Hydrogen, we have only one in HNO3. And we try to balance that. Nitrogen is not balanced, oxygen is not balanced, hydrogen is not balanced. And how can we balance that? Oxygen exists in every compound. So oxygen will be the last element that we will try to balance. If you look at nitrogen, in the rectum, it only exists in one compound. Good. But in the product, it exists in both compounds. So nitrogen, we we'll keep it aside first. In this case, we will try to balance hydrogen. Because hydrogen in the rectum only holding by the water, hydrogen in the product only holding by the HNO3. Try to balance that. I have two hydrogen on the rectum. I need two hydrogen on the product. So I will times two. So when I times two, what is changing? Hydrogen is changing. Two times one, I have two hydrogen. Two times N, I have two nitrogen. Two times three, I will then have 6 oxygen. So we will try to change everything. Hydrogen right now is 2, 2 times 2. Nitrogen, 2 times 1, 2, plus with 1 over here. So nitrogen, we are having 3. Oxygen, 2 times 3, 6, plus 1, 7. And hydrogen right now is balanced, H2. But Oxygen, nitrogen are not balanced. So look at who is having less number of atoms. Reactant having nitrogen 1, product having nitrogen 3. Reactant having oxygen 3, product having oxygen 7. So reactant are the ones that having not enough atom right now. And if you look at the reactant, we have NO2 compound that holding nitrogen and oxygen. And how do we balance that? Look at the nitrogen. I need three nitrogen. Therefore, I need to put a coefficient 
3. When you put a coefficient 3, 3 times 1 nitrogen become 3. So nitrogen changed to 3. Oxygen, 3 times 2. Oxygen right now become 6. 6 plus 1. Oxygen become 7. And we will try to check again your reactant and product. Reactant, nitrogen 3, product nitrogen 3. Reactant, oxygen 7, product oxygen 7. Reactant, hydrogen 2, product hydrogen 2. And that is your balanced chemical equation. Next, we have more element right now, but it's still the same. We know that that is your reactant size because of the arrow. That is your product. And what are we going to do? Same thing. Write out every single element that exists. I have PV. I have nitrogen, oxygen, potassium, iodine. So same thing. We'll write them in the same order as the reactant in the product. So I'll start off with PV. I will then have nitrogen. I will then have oxygen, potassium, and I. And what do we do next? We calculate the number of PV exists in reactant. How many PV do we have? One. How many nitrogen do we have? Two times one. So we have two. How many oxygen do we have? Two times three. So we have six. Potassium, we have one. I, we have one. So on the product, your PV, we have only one. Your nitrogen, we have only one, your oxygen, we have three, your potassium, we have one, your iodine, we have two. Slightly different in this question is, all the elements only exist in one compound in the reactant and one compound in the product. So if you look at PV, only exists in this compound. In the product, PV only exists once. And same, only exists in the same reactant. And only exist in the same product. Oxygen only in the same product. Potassium and iodine also only in the same product. So everything did not repeat. So which one do we balance first? Look at those that are not balanced. Nitrogen are not balanced. Oxygen are not balanced. Iodine is not balanced. So we try to balance those first. Nitrogen on my Reactant, I have two nitrogen. On my product, I only have one. So what do we do? We need two nitrogen on the product. And nitrogen is in the KNO3. We will then put a coefficient 2 in here. And when you put a coefficient 2 in here, the only thing that change is not nitrogen. We will be changing the potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen. So look at the potassium. Potassium will become 2. Nitrogen will also become 2. Oxygen. 2 times 3 will become 6. So let's change that. Potassium become 2. Nitrogen become 2. Oxygen become 6. And let's check that again. PV 1 remain balanced. Nitrogen 2 now is balanced. Oxygen 6 now is balanced. Potassium 1, Potassium 2. Iodine 1, Iodine 2. Now only Potassium and Iodine is not balanced. So, in the reactant, we have a compound that only holding Potassium and Iodine. So what do we do? I need 2 Potassium and 2 Iodine. So we times 2. We put a 2 coefficient. And your K will then become 2, your I will then become 2. And now, if you look at the number of atom on the reactant and the number of atom on the product for each element, all of them are now balanced. PV, 1, nitrogen, 2, oxygen, 6, potassium, 2, iodine, 2. Done. Simple. 